controlling function. You have a leader who is very efficient, who is very effective. All the things have been properly organized. The plan is very well designed. The strategies to achieve them are very good. But if there is no control, things cannot may not work the way you want them to work. Why? Because people can decide or can sometimes not be trusted and they will deviate from what has been laid down. And so it is better you put in control measures to ensure that what you have said you want to achieve, that is what is being achieved. And that's what, what you want people to do, that's what they are doing. Controlling does not mean that you are going to be punished or whatever. But it means ensure the right thing is done at the right time. And then the strategies that meant to achieve the plan are working according to order. And so we want to understand controlling. We want to understand the importance of controlling, the control process, the types of control, and then issues in con of control in the contemporary world. So friend, what is controlling? When we control, we try to monitor. We try to compare and then to correct work performance. We try to monitor to ensure that what is being done is the right thing. We try to compare to ensure that what we want to do is what we are doing. We try and then we try to correct. If we identify what we are co comparing or what we are seeing based on the comparison that we are making, it's not what we want to do. So we try to correct what the wrongs that have been done. So when we control, we enable management to estimate performance gaps and areas for improvement. As I said earlier, we have an expected performance. And so once people are performing and there is a control mechanism, it enables you to see step by step whether what you are doing is the right thing or not. And so if what you are doing, perhaps we have deviated slightly, then the corrective measure a measure will be put um, in place to correct what we have been done. Or perhaps we are doing the right thing, but we, have, we are lagging behind time. We will also work to ensure that we work according to the times and the, p and the, 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 the go according to the schedules that we have put in place in the plan and in the organization aspect. So effective control ensure that activities are completed in ways that lead to the attainment of goals. So control, therefore controlling serves as a tool for empowering employees. Controlling, as I've said, does not it mean that we are trying to restrict you or trying to put fear into you. Even though it is an emotive word, yes, and it invokes fear, yes, it is a means of um, making sure that employees have the requisite scale and doing what is right. What do we mean over here? If we control and we see that there is a wrong somewhere. We provide corrective measures and the employee begins to acquire that requisite scale that enables him to do the right thing. And that's to ensure that we have an effective tool to ensure that things are being done according to what, how it has been stipulated. And so it gives feedback to the employees. It gives feedback to the employee because when the employee is do working and we observe that the employee is either on track or off track, the responses given to the employee make the employee aware that, yes, I am, I am on the right track or I'm the wrong track. And therefore, if he's on the right track and we recommend the person, the person is empowered. The person's morale is boosted. 
if that person's on the, on the wrong side and we provide corrective measures, it motivates the person to also learn to do better things the next time. And so controlling minimizes the chances of potential problems. And so apart from that, it serves as a means to protect assets of the organization. We said in plan that planning reduces redundancies and then waste. And so once we, once we control, we try to reduce waste because we ensure that people do what is right at the right time. And then so managers must protect the organizations from threats from natural disasters. In other words, so that's, um, we, when we are controlling, we put in measures to prevent, for example, fire, flood. Yes, there are certain, some, of the, some of the times, some of these things we cannot control. We cannot limit, but we try to, as much as possible to reduce its occurrences. And then financial scandals. When we have control and there are checks and balances in the system, people cannot abuse their positions. Violence at the workplace, accidents at the workplace, security breaches at the workplace. When we control, all these things try and to ensure or work to ensure that the organizations achieve its set objectives according to the, what has been put in place. And so the control process is a three-step process. First, you measure actual performance. What are the people doing? Or what, as an organization, what are, have we done? First, we have what is called the standard performance or the expected performance. For example, every three quarter, every quarter, we are going to do A, B, C. So in the first quarter, if there are control measures, it tells us that, that you have done A, B, and C, which is that you have done what is right. But the control measure, if it, it, you, it is there and it tells you that you have done A, B, but you have yet to go to C. It tells that something is wrong somewhere. And so in that case, you then move to the third step. You take managerial action to correct the deviation. So in one, one, once we do control, first we must have a certain level, a certain expectation. And then what have you seen? What is the actual performance of the organization or the employee or the group or the team? And then what is the, what is the variation? The variation will tell you that if there's, a, if there's a variation, it tells that there's something is wrong somewhere. And if there's no variation, it tells you that, yes, we are right on track, and therefore, you can move on. And so, we measure actual performance. Yes, there are four ways to measure actual performance. Personal observation. As a person, as a leader, you observe as the people work. And then... So you get first and knowledge information. This is, um, then you observe the people work. First you move around and observe them and see what they are doing. And then, and then when you have a statistical report, you also visualize people write reports to you every month, every week, and determine whether people are doing what is right. And then oral reports, perhaps you can call them for they appear for interview briefing or the briefing sessions. They tell what is happening. And then written reports also come in. And when it comes to statistical reports, even um, <coughs> every the daily activity of a person can be observed, and then things are done. They have the things and their disadvantages, but each of them can be used to ensure that what you want to do is being achieved, and is and is being and you are on point. So then it starts. Comparing actual performance, that's the second step in that uh, approach. So then you, so you compare. You determine the, the, the variance between actual performance and the standard. My actual performance is what I actually do. And the standard is what has been given to me. But as my job description tells me that I must do this A, B, C, and D as a certain, within a certain period. But then what is my actual performance is what I actually did. But you see, and it is not it is not easy for everybody to read the actual performance standards. Sometimes there are variations. And so depending on the degree of variation that you have set, 
if a person gets to a certain level, it is good. And then, if there's a, if there's a person also gets below the, the minimum variation, then you can uh, take corrective measures to correct the person. And so, although some variance in performance can be expected in all activities, it is critical to determine an acceptable range of variance. At what point do we say that this one is unacceptable? At what point do we say this is acceptable? That's, what, that's the degree of the range of variance. And so, assuming that there is a standard, that 100% is the standard, if the person gets 90, what is it? Is it acceptable or unacceptable? If the, what, and if the person gets 50, is it acceptable or unacceptable? If the person gets 40, is it acceptable or unacceptable? That is why in, in this university, we have 100, somebody gets 70 to 90, says it is very, very good. Somebody gets 50, uh, 50, 60 to 50, or yes, 60 to 69, say it is good. And so, see, we have different acceptable ranges of vari variance. And therefore, depend on that, depend on the variance, then such corrective measures will be put in place. If a person gets below 40, it says, you are you are failed. That means that, that variance is so so much to be accepted. Or if the person gets even forty nine, says no, this you need to improve and work hard on it. And so the diagram tells you the acceptable level of variance and then the level of performance that you, you want to um, have, and then what can be considered as below limit and therefore need some corrective measures. And so these are um, examples that can be used. We have very, uh, very vegetable plants, products, standard, 107 actual. And so see that the person did not achieve the acceptable standard. But looking at perhaps the, de the degree of variance, we can say that this is acceptable. Then the second point, perennial flower is 630. The actual is The person has gone beyond what is accepted. So that that person can be rewarded. And so it all depends on the standards that you have set, the upper limits, then the average the person can reach. If the person goes below the average, if a person can be punished, the person can be trained, or whatever. Depends on what you want to do. And so says then the next as a take major action. That's the third process or the third step. So manage two among three possible courses. Do nothing. That means that do nothing means that the person is within the acceptable level. Correct actual performance. That means the person has done something, but then he's yet to reach the acceptable level of performance. Not the standard performance, but then within a certain level. And so that person can be corrected, or the person is below average. If the person, the person can be fired, the person can be punished, or whatever. It depends on what, or sometimes the standard can be too high for the person to achieve. And so if you think that persistently people are not being able to achieve a standard, you revise it and make it challenging, but not difficult. Then the third one is that correct actual performance. There are two approaches to correct actual performance. Immediate corrective action, which is means correct a problem at once to get performance back on track, or basic corrective measures. Is look at how and why performance deviated before correcting the source of deviation. Now, sometimes we put the blame on people. A person can perform a job. You correct the, uh, the person is not reaching the acceptable standard, so you can provide a correction all right. But sometimes you need to assess the task itself. Why is it that the person is not achieving the results? Is it because the person doesn't have the requisite scale, or the task is difficult, or the standard is too much for the person? You need to look at that. And then the second one is that d depend on the what. Is it, uh, and the second um, and the uh, corrective measure. The second one. Depend on what the situation is, many can take different corrective measures. For instance, in correcting unsatisfactory, for instance, in correcting unsatisfactory work performance, the many can correct it by implementing training programs, as I said earlier, taking disciplinary action, punishing or firing, as I said earlier, and then making changes in compensation practices. Maybe to deny the person certain rewards or perhaps improve or increase the rewards so that it becomes a morale booster for the person to perform and perform very well. And then the 
The other one is that you revise the standard. As I've said earlier, if the standard is too high, it can affect performance. If it is too low, it can affect, affect the performance. So the standard need not be difficult. It must be challenging. It must be correct. It must be challenging. So that's why I said in this, the standard not the standard, not the performance needs corrective action. If it's too difficult, it creates confu confusion and frustration. If it is too low, it creates boredom. And therefore, something must be done. So that if one is challenging and the person is performing it, the person feels motivated to perform the task. And then if performance concern exceeds the goal, then a manager should look at whether the goal is too easy and needs to be raised, as I've said already. So these are some of the decisions that the, the manager can, can take based on what we have discussed. Then task of control, we have feed forward control, concurrent control, and then feedback control. What is feedback control? It is concerned with taking managerial action before a problem occurs. That means it is proactive. So that, that means you can provide training before even the person starts work. You can work, train the person. If the person is working on machines or it's technology, the person must, must, must be trained on the use of the, that technology so that the person doesn't make any mistake. Or if the person doesn't have the requisite training, you provide the training or the skill for the person so that the person can perform and perform adequately. Or better still, the standard set must be such that the person will not feel frustrated working to achieve it. That's the feedback so that you prevent the problem from occurring. Then we have concurrent control that takes place while work activity is in progress. That means it's a, it's a process. In fact, control system is a process in itself. So that you don't wait for the problem to come. Or even if the problem comes, you don't halt work, but then you provide training as and when the, manage, the person identifies it. And in this case, weekly briefing of employees or reports sent to employees can be useful. Employees send the briefing to their managers or their supervisors, reviewing it and sitting down to review with the employees. They will be able to determine whether problems are occurring. And so it, this, it helps the management to provide that control measure to prevent future occurrence of that particular problem. So it says talking to employees and visiting the company's numerous locations. And all managers can benefit from using concurrent control because they can correct problems before they become too costly. And then we have feedback control where within a certain period of time, let's say a quarter uh, or half year, we sit with employees, we decide on how things are going, we provide, and then we provide corrective measures where that need arises. So that's why I said the, it's the most popular type of control. It relies on feedback. In feedback control, the control takes place after the activity is done. It has two advantages. Gives managers meaningful information on how effective their planning efforts were, and then they, uh, they motivate the employees through the kind of corrective measures that they take place. And so feedback control is important, and managers are able to determine whether things are being done right or not. That is why most organizations have periodic reviews or assessment of their plans to determine whether things are being done the way they're supposed to be done. And feedback, when it is given appropriately, can enhance motivation, can be a source of motivation because once it is given to the employee and it's a right, the employee is empowered, the employee now has the skill, and the employee now can provide what he support, do what he's supposed to do. And apart from that, even the employee hasn't make any, made any mistake, and the employee is on track. The type of expressions used for the employee, you have done well, you are on track. That also motivates the person to work extra hard because the person is receiving that recognition that will boost his or her morale. Then financial control, here you want to earn profits and therefore you want to ensure that things are put in place that, that, that monies are not used anyhow. And so we, uh, we need to have uh, financial control. We analyze income statements 
and then see whether expenses are far uh, uh, are exceeding income or income is exceeding expenses. And then you try to look at how much you are spending within the organization and then trying to ensure that you balance your expenditure with your income so that you can make profit and then expand the organization. Then formation con control as a, as, a, as a tool in the hands of management. Management needs the right information at the right time and the right amount to monitor and measure organizational activities and performance. And in this sense, management needs information, especially what is happening in the organization, in the area of responsibility about the standards. I know what I must know. So the VC every year receives reports from all departments and he knows what is happening. So he is able to determine whether things are being done right or wrong. When this happens, things can be uh, done appropriately and the manager is seen to be in control of the activities of the organization. And so this will enable him to compare actual performance with the standard that has been set. Now, control uh, as a function has been evolving and there are issues in control in modern world. Now, so as we need to adjust controls for cross-cultural differences. Uh, so that workforce diversity. And apart from that, assuming we have an organization with different branches in different geographical areas, the same control measures may not be able to work in all the areas. While the control measure must be in tune with the standard practices within that particular area. And then technology impact on control. Technology is happening these days. And these days, um, a lot of companies use ICT as a means to control performance in the organization. And so there, there are limits to what a person can use the, IC, the, the ICT technology for. And so they are able to monitor at all times what a person is doing. So it says, then that time I said, managers in countries where technology is more advanced often use indirect control devices such as computer generated reports and analysis, then standardized rules and direct supervision. These are things that are done in different parts of the country uh, or parts of the world depending on the level of technology. This are, that's why I said the situation, the best standard practice in the, in, in the geographic area must, be, must inform the type of control measures that we, is put in place. Thank you for for your cooperation. We now move to the last.